Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you some techniques with acrylic paint. So um, I've got a few here just to show you the different brands you can get. Obviously there's probably loads more brands than this and um, it depends on how much you want to spend on paint. Um, some paints are more heavy bodied and have higher quality um, pigments and um, are really good. Some of the cheaper ones are still good for, for just like um, art journaling or hobby sort of painting if you really got into serious sort of acrylic paint. Um, you know as a proper acrylic artist then you would probably go for uh, much more expensive brands and just for the uh, colour fastness and the, the quality of the paint. But today we're just having a little play and see what we can do with them. So generally, uh, if you're working in a on a paper or on um, in your sketchbook, um, you can use what's called gesso, which is basically a primer. Um, it comes in different colours, mostly white. I think I have seen in clear and black. I'm not sure if there are any other colours. Um, you, you basically use this to prime your surface so if you ever buy um, ready-made acrylic um, canvases or just general canvases uh, they're usually pre-primed with gesso so you don't really need to do it if you're using paper this is actually acrylic paper so it's quite thick it's um, I think it's 350 GSM so it's quite a thick paper I'm just going to check that I'm sure I'm right yeah, you normally see it on um, the pad, how much, um, what the weight of the paper is, and it's usually, and it's, it actually says it's pre-primed and it has a matte surface, so the primer is probably actually built into the paper there. Also some um, books, uh, sketchbooks and um, paper, it's called like mixed media paper, often that's um, pre-primed as well. But um, if you're using normal cartridge paper or you're working in a sketchbook, probably best to prime it first with um, with some gesso it just gives it a bit of extra protection a bit of a bit of a good surface for the paint to be layered on especially when you're doing art journaling where you could be adding lots of layers you want um, the paper to be nice and stable right so um, I'm just going to show you a few techniques here hopefully you can read what what these are so perhaps you can copy it um, and have a go yourself I've got a flat wash graduated wash, stipple, dry brushing, a glaze and a scumble glaze. So don't worry about what these, what the actual names are and try and remember them because it really doesn't matter. It's, the, it's all about the technique and what they might, what you might find them useful for. Uh, today I, I tend to use some um, bits of plastic lids and ice cream tub lids and takeaway lids for my palettes just because they're easy they're flat and I can throw them away once they're a bit um, a bit messy and the good thing about acrylic paint if it does dry in here you can literally peel it off usually so I'm just going to start with a flat wash I'm going to pop a little bit of paint on there And I'm going to use a flat brush. These are nylon brushes, which are quite good for acrylic. I'm just dampening it a little bit. And I've also got a piece of kitchen towel here just to get rid of the uh, excess water. And the flat wash is literally just an even, an even painted wash like this. The more water you add, you can um, make the paint smoother. Right, I'm going to try graduated wash this time. So this time I'm going to add a little bit of white in the mix. I'm going to start off with blue. I'm going to work down the page until I hit that white area. And then I'm going to work back and forwards until I get a kind of like a blended. It's quite good for doing skies, this technique. 
but as you can see you've got like a nice blend of dark to light there obviously the more or less white you add um, the difference of graduation you'll get um, so this one's quite a nice one to try it doesn't have to be used just for skies it could be used for anything but you could do nice sunsets and things with it something that gives a really nice effect right the next one is stipple so a stipple is usually um, you can use what, what I call a stippling brush well what everyone calls a stippling brush actually um, so it's basically a brush that's been flattened off at the top you can actually use any brush for this uh, the mankier the brush the better. I find like, even my old brushes I, I just keep because they are good for doing certain techniques where you want a more broken texture or effect. So with the stipple we're using it quite dry and then I'm literally just pouncing the brush and it leaves that nice sort of dotted effect. So the key is not to have too much paint on the brush if you find there's too much, then just dab it on a tissue. This is quite good to do like stone effect and um, just a bit of texture. Or even um, if you stencil something, it can leave quite a good effect. Actually, I might just try that. So let's get a bit of paper. Just got a little bit of a scrap paper here. So I just cut a shape in it. Let's do a heart. And then again, I'll hold that down. And then I'll just pounce over that. A bit harder this time. And you can leave a nice sort of effect. So then that looks quite nice, doesn't it? So you can experiment on how much you want to stipple and um, obviously you don't get the, the brush strokes like you do with the, the flat wash or the graduated. Right, dry brushing. So dry brushing is kind of like what it says really. It's almost like a, an almost dry brush. So obviously a wet brush um, will have a lot of paint loaded onto it. So a dry brush is almost like your paints almost run out on your brush and you're looking for a very sort of a soft kind of effect you can just about see that hopefully so you can try adding more paint you might find you have to press a bit lighter and if you go in different directions you'll get a slightly different pattern if you've got a textured paper or a texture underneath like if you've done quite a thick heavy paint um, you can get quite nice sort of like grainy effect which is quite nice also if you're painting on wood you can bring out the sort of texture of wood and any sort of other texture on your painting just by dry brushing over it, it sort of often lifts it out it looks really nice right a glaze over a wash so first of all, I'm going to do a wash so I'm just going to do a blue flat wash again I'm going to let that dry. Some processes you have to let dry before you do the technique over the top. If you don't, it just ends up like a mush. This, oh, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll just show you a scumble glaze. So a scumble glaze is, if you think of a glaze as, as a very thin, semi-transparent wash. So, um, basically you're adding a lot of water so it's almost like a watercolour consistency so if you see the glaze like it's almost the more water you add it's more sort of gives you a more watery kind of effect and you can also paint over different colours and you get like different um, effects so it's good it's good to experiment with them so that's why acrylics are really good because they're very versatile. You can use them for loads of different um, techniques. So I'm just checking whether that's dry. So a glaze over a wash. So again, a glaze is a semi-transparent 
coat of paint. I'm going to just use white just to show a bit of contrast. So I'm going to clean my brush again. It's going to be probably be a light blue and wash now because the brush is a little bit mucky, but I'm not worried about that at the moment. So I'm literally making that quite watery. And then I'm just painting that wash so it almost dilutes that blue a bit as well so it's just like lightened the um, color so because acrylic dries um, very quickly and it dries into like a waterproof layer when you add a color over the top it won't bleed so unlike watercolors where if you painted a watercolor red for example and you painted over it white the result would be pink because two colors have merged together with acrylics it pretty much dries into a sort of waterproof layer. So if I'm painting over this, for example, I'll just show you with um, some neat paint. Let's do a couple of lines. It pretty much just sits on the top, the paint. So another good thing with acrylics, you can just keep, if you're making a mistake or you don't like the look of something, you can just keep going over it and going over it and go over it. Or even if you mess up a canvas, you think, oh, this is a disaster. You can literally just gesso over the whole thing and start again. So um, really versatile um, uh, media. Right, I've got a few other things to show you, which is quite fun. Um, some other techniques, one is impasto, so impasto is like using the heavy body paint quite thickly so you're not um, using a brush, you tend to use a palette knife. This is actually a spatula out the kitchen because um, that's all I could find at the moment but you can pretty much use anything as a palette knife. I mean, I've used bits of cardboard before now or bits of, you know, like um, old store cards that you don't use anymore. Keep them and use those. They, they make really good palette knives. So you don't always need all the fancy um, products and fancy equipment to produce similar effects. So in pasto, I'm literally getting the neat paint and I'm literally just blobbing it on. You get sort of a nice thick texture there. Okay. Another technique I quite like, because I do quite like working with texture, is you can add sand to acrylic. So this is just sand, builder's sand or whatever. Um, I'm literally just going to add a little bit to the paint. I'm literally just going to mush the sand into it. You can buy lots of textured product, like textured acrylics and and um, different medias to make your acrylics, you know, shiny or matte or textured or metallic. But a lot of it you can just do do yourself. So obviously the paint manufacturers they want you to buy stuff, don't they? So they like to try and create all these things. Um, to try and tempt you into buying it but you can literally do loads yourself so this is the sand so the same in pasto it's quite gritty sanding when you put it on it's really good if you're doing say like a sea painting or if you want to sort of emulate a texture of a wall or or you know or anything really so that gives it quite a nice effect I'm going to try a different colour now. So, oops. So I'm going to do. I'm just going to. I'm going to use a brush this time. Oops. So I'm just going to lay it on pretty thick. Uh, 
and um, I'm going to use something to scrape back into the paint. This is actually called scraffito, this technique. Um, I'm just going to wipe off the excess off my palette knife and you can use, use a palette knife just to make nice scratches in your paint. Also if you, if you layered up a couple of different colours you'd reveal the colour underneath so that would be really nice texture wise. So I quite like the graffito effect. You can also use like the back of a paintbrush, you know, if you wanted to say a bit more rough and ready. You can use anything, you could use a you can use your fingernail if you really want to store a pen or anything, so or a little bit of cardboard, let's see what that does. Sometimes you can just create different textures just by playing about really. That's what I love about mixed media, you can just mess, it's like messy play, you can just mess around and do what you want. So, that's scrape back, or I should say scraffito. Another technique um, I quite like using is sponging. So, you can use any type of sponge. This is obviously a bit of a washing up sponge. Uh, natural sea sponges are good because they're more uh, textured and... Um, sort of more holy if you know what I mean. So obviously different sponge will cause different effects. This is quite a fine weave sponge, very tightly um, compacted sort of material. So if I just dip that in my paint, I've dampened the sponge a bit just so it helps absorb the paint a bit and I'm literally just going to sponge on onto my piece of paper. So that gives quite a nice effect. Again, sponging over different colours is really good, or sponging over, say, like, um, so you did a dark background and you thought, oh, that's a bit dark. You could actually sponge over a lighter colour and even it out. I mean, you can have a broken effect, or you can sort of dampen it even more and have more of a sort of a uneven, solid effect. So another really versatile piece of kit for your um, art box and obviously the thinner the paint the more it will just blend into a really subtle nice effect okay <clears throat> right flecking flecking is an interesting one and a messy one so this time I'm going to go back to a bit of blue so you to get a bit of um, paint that hasn't got sand in. So flecking, uh, you can use a toothbrush for this as well, your old toothbrush. Um, or an old brush or pretty much anything. I'm just going to use a stippling brush because I just happen to have it here. Um, bristle brushes are better for this because bristle brushes are more open, whereas um, nylon brushes are quite um, they're almost too neat, too smooth. So literally just running my finger across it like that. Just having a little little fleck. Also, it's nice to do it on different backgrounds as well, so I could just try it on there to see what that looks like. So you can create really nice textures with this. Right, so the last one I'm going to show you is plaster, PVA and acrylic. So this is one of my own sort of recipes that I used to do when I was a student because um, when you're a student you obviously can't afford all the fancy uh, acrylic thickening paints and everything. So I used to experiment and mess about with, with um, my own sort of recipes of paint. So this one is actually plaster, so it's like just like filler. I'm literally just going to pop that on there. So a little bit of white paint on there already. I'm going to put a little bit of acrylic, a bit of PVA glue in it, just a little bit. It's not particularly measured in a particular sort of way, and a bit of acrylic. So um, basically, it makes a, a sort of a thicker paint. So I'm going to use the this to mix it. I've not added any water. So 
So the plaster thickens the paint and the PVA helps it become a bit more um, elastic if you like. So obviously if you're painting with plaster onto a piece of paper and the piece of paper got bent or turned over this, the paint would just crack off and fall off. So even though the, the um, acrylic is a quite plasticky paint the PVA just adds a little bit of bit of something yeah so that's still quite runny at the moment so I'm just going to add a little bit more filler so it's just like poly filler or like that and it's, it's sort of you have to experiment with it just to see What, what you know what you're looking for whether you want it really thick and chunky or whether you just want a little bit um, more of a thinner sort of effect um, I've also heard other people using acrylic PVA and um, talcum powder so if you are up for having an experiment you could have a try of that and I've also heard people using corn flour Obviously that's like a thickener, isn't it? So corn flour, acrylic, maybe a little bit of PVA just to get it going. So, you know, you can you can have fun at home with whatever you've got in the cupboard, especially during this lockdown when perhaps you can't go out and buy materials. Um, same with things like palette knives, you know, lolly sticks, bits of cardboard, you know, don't feel you've got to have the exact perfect um, artist spatula just to uh, you know to do artwork you really don't you can just use what you have I'm gonna I'm gonna gloop this on so if you can see it's really nice sort of almost like um, decorated cake or something so it's really nice and thick and lumpy so obviously this is a background color you could do different effects over the top you could scrape into it you could sponge over a different color over it you could just do a wash over it so it's just um having fun with the paint and just testing it to its limits and seeing what you can do with it and um even if you're just having a little play like this it's worth keeping little notes um, next to what you've done just to remind you how you got that effect so and then at some point you could be flicking through your sketchbook and you think oh yeah that would be a really ideal background for something another good thing you can do with this is the same thing like I did with the stencil so if I just get another piece of paper or actually I can use that same stencil because it's still intact so I'm going to get a bit of this goop I'll put it over the top of there I'm literally just going to very delicately just drop that on the top of it and then lift that off. Oops, a bit messy. But anyway, you get the idea. It gives a nice sort of textured, um, like a raised image, a bit like using a stencil. So again, not with this, you can scrape into it. That will take longer to dry. When it does dry, it should be quite stable on the page because it's got the PVA in it. So hopefully you can have a go at these and um, just have a play and see what you can come up with. And um, if you, once you've done some a bit of experimenting, if you can prepare a couple of pages uh, with your chosen technique or a mixture of the techniques, that we can then work on those the following week. Okay, so have fun and get messy. Bye for now.